It's one of the most depressing science fiction movies you'll ever see, yet in some ways it could have almost predicted our future. Released in 1973, it took the concept of environmental destruction by human neglect to a whole new level. Yes, we're talking about Soil and Green, and this is Science 5. Soil and Green was based on the 1966 novel Make Room, Make Room by Harry Harrison. However, the film had a number of notable differences from the book to the point it is often considered to be a loose adaptation. Somewhat ironically, the term soylent does actually appear in the book, though in this instance it refers to steaks made out of soy and lentil. The film itself is set in New York City in 2022, which has a population of 40 million people. Unlike the real 2022, when the population was around 8.5 million. In the film's version of 2022, the Earth is so heavily polluted that there are massive shortages of food, water and housing. Making matters worse is the constant year-round humidity caused by the greenhouse effect due to unchecked environmental damage. Due to these combined factors, death is a common occurrence, so much so that the dead are transported to a waste disposal facility in lieu of a proper funeral. Yet somewhat paradoxically, the film's actual story is almost unrelated to the world in which it's set. First and foremost, the film is a murder mystery, whereby a wealthy board member for the Soylent Corporation is found dead in his home. Upon investigating the unusual circumstances of the crime, Detective Robert Thorne discovers there's more going on than meets the eye. Like most science fiction movies of the early 1970s, Soil and Green was not intended to be a joyful popcorn adventure. If anything, the film was a metaphor for the pessimistic and negative attitude of American society at the time, which also included a very bleak outlook for the future. Soil and Green contains a number of poignant messages regarding Western society and humanity in general especially the frightening power and influence of large global corporations, especially the lengths they will go to to manipulate markets, and in some cases governments, to ensure ongoing profitability and control. In addition, the film highlights the massive social disparity between the wealthy and the less fortunate, whereby a large percentage of the city's population are homeless and impoverished, while those who do have a home, even if they are run down and dilapidated, are considered the fortunate ones. To combat the ever-increasing food shortage, the all-powerful Soylent Corporation produce high-energy vegetable concentrate wafers in red and yellow, whilst the all-new and highly desirable Soylent Green is derived from plankton found in the ocean. However, it's only available in limited quantities. Whilst by contrast, the rich and elite get to experience a luxurious lifestyle which is actually akin to our real world, where we have spacious housing, real food and clean water which is clearly a none too subtle attempt to remind the audience of just how fortunate we are to live in the world that we've got and to treasure it. One of the film's key points is its powerful and unforgiving imagery. Aside from the ugly green hue of the atmosphere and the constant feeling of oppressive heat, one of the film's most iconic sequences involves a crowd of starving people rioting when soil and green is suddenly unavailable. Sadly, in this version of 2022, Civil and legal rights have no meaning, especially when garbage trucks, called scoops, are brought in to physically remove rioters from the streets. Featured in the film are the three main protagonists, Robert Thorne played by Charlton Heston, Sherl portrayed by Lee Taylor Young, and Solomon Roth played by Edward G. Robinson in his final film. Whilst the primary antagonist is actually the mysterious soil and corporation with its nefarious and hidden motives. Under the outstanding direction of Richard Fleischer, Soil and Green connected with some people but not others. This was possibly due to the film's internal conflict about whether it was trying to be an environmental disaster film or a procedural crime drama. However, as the decades have passed, audiences have come to appreciate the film's environmental message. So who should see the film? Soil and Green clearly falls under the category of parental guidance recommended although younger people probably won't find much joy in the movie anyway due to its slow pace, dull colour scheme, depressive mood and lack of action sequences. Furthermore, the continual mistreatment, abuse and exploitation of women, particularly those who are considered the property of a wealthy individual or even a luxurious housing unit, will likely upset some viewers. So if you haven't seen the film before, then you're in for a 1970s classic. Soylent Green is not a pleasant movie, but it will make you think about its core message and how relevant it is after all these decades. But if that doesn't take your fancy, then at the very least you'll never take running water from a tap for granted ever again. And for that reason alone, it's well worth watching.